man, I tell you, it took me a while. Like the beginning of last year, April, I was thinking, you know, God, I know you have it in your plan for me. I get it. I understand. Just give it to me because I'm ready to go. So I really had to learn some patience and to actually let go instead of saying, just give me the roadmap. I'll drive there. That was really the wrong way for me to think about it. I almost, I had to get out of the driver's seat. So being direct. Welcome to the Live Lovely podcast. I'm so excited to introduce you to a new friend of mine. His name is Bruce Pulver, and he's incredible. I'm going to let him just help you get to know him, but we're going to discuss words today. You guys know as a community, we truly believe in the power of words, and so does Bruce. And so I know this episode is going to bring you a lot of value, and I can't wait for you to hear it. So Bruce, welcome to the podcast. April. Happy New Year. It's great to be with you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to you and to everybody that out, that's out there in podcast land uh, checking us out this morning. Thanks for joining. Yeah, well, Bruce, just kind of introduce yourself. Uh, let us know who you are, maybe what season of life, what, what are the, the highlights, what's going on? Yeah, so thank you. So uh, uh, I am uh, 35 years or so. I've lived in Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up in the southeast down in Florida. I'm uh, a husband to one and a father to two daughters. My oldest is 23 and my youngest is 20. Uh, the oldest is getting her uh, doctorate in physical therapy and my youngest is a sophomore at the University of Georgia and a member of the UGA women's soccer team. So I have been around um, young ladies my entire life. They inspire me. I just, I just am so proud of them. And we've been through a lot of things together then maybe we can chat about as it, as it relates to, you know, persistence and challenges and opportunities and things. Um, I've been in the, the healthcare services business my entire career, so approximately 35 years or so. And about five years ago, um, I had a major life change that I call a BAM moment. I talk about it in my book and I talk about it in my, my TED Talk. To me, a BAM moment is when everything was kind of going along well in life or, or, or consistent. I don't want to say comfortable, but you know, the path seemed familiar. And then all of a sudden, after, you know, a pretty significant win in my corporate uh, career, my position was eliminated. So, so bam, as I call it, my bam moment, all of a sudden in my life, everything altered that I had kind of counted on as it related to what identified me as an individual. And with that moment all came, you know, a real challenge. But at the same time, hindsight came an amazing assignment. I woke up the morning after this layoff with one word pounding in my head. And I write that on the cover of my book above the chatter, our words matter. And that word was strong. And I didn't know what it meant, but I reached for the nightstand pad and paper, and I just wrote it vertically. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, just kind of how I got that concept kind of came to me. And I just used the letters of that word to try to define what strong meant to me in that moment, because I was searching for something that would, would help me kind of make it through the next day, even. Well, strong became the, the six letters of strong, stand tall, remain optimistic, now go for it, S-T-R-O-N-G. So what that did for me, April, is it sort of helped me look at a word and its meaning in a totally different way. It just blossomed the meaning, the meaning of that word. Uh, fast forward, that morning ritual, that morning process, and I truly believe was, was a divine download to me, continued for over 400 consecutive mornings where I woke up, a word was like in my mind, I wrote it down, I looked at it, and then I came up with a message around that word. What it taught me was the power of my words spoken out loud or to myself were incredibly impactful to my mindset and how I approached everything, including starting each day. Yeah, I love that so much. So you and I, we, that's what we have in common, just the fact that we love words. And just in my own life, words have been so powerful. And I love how you talked about, you know, words you can speak over yourself. Because I think a lot of times we say a lot of negative self-talk, 
we like a negative thought comes to our mind, it just jumps out of our mouths without stopping and realizing, wait, I need to make sure that my words line up with what I desire for my life. So I absolutely love that. Yeah, you know, it, we, it's not easy. And it almost is, it's almost natural because we, we tend to be protective of ourselves. So we say don't or avoid or you shouldn't or be careful. You know, all of those things, even if we don't say them out loud, they manifest in the script that goes on in our, in our mind. And in fact, according to psychology today, we have approximately 60,000 thoughts a day and, and close to 90% of them are negative and often they are repeated. So it's real easy to, to fall back into that space. And I was there. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I must not be good enough. I must not be smart enough. I must not have done a good enough job. I must not have you know, closed this big deal on my own. Maybe there are people out there that did it for me. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm living this, this imposter mindset. And it was just pounding. It was in my head on that drive home from, from the office on that day of the layoff. So thank God. And I, I mean that those two words deeply that he instilled on me, not just the challenge of the job, but he also gave me an assignment to write down every one of these words every morning. And then, you know, the story continues as, you know, it's just absolutely changed my life with the book, with speaking, with the TED Talk, and just the opportunity to, to, to share with you today, April, just on, you know, you can kind of tell how passionate I am about the power of words. Yeah, and I appreciate, I just want to let you guys know as a community, Bruce was so gracious to send me a copy of his book, and I want to encourage all of you to check it out. Um, it is just such a great resource. You know, you can just pick it up and just speak those positive words over yourself. It's almost like you make it easy for us. We don't have to think, oh my goodness, what should I say today? It's just like right there. It's such a gift to the world. So thank you so much. I love how you mentioned, you know, those 400 consecutive dates, and that just shows just the power of consistency, you know, when you set your mind to do something and you're consistent, that's powerful. So if you can pair that consistency with speaking positive words over yourself, I'm sure anyone's life would change. Oh, that is so strong. And you know, that, that, that exercise really helped me understand two things. Uh, one is called incrementalism. And I know it's kind of a long word, but what that means to me is doing a little bit toward that big goal every single day, nonstop, relentlessly. It doesn't matter if it's, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run a marathon by December. Well, you can't do that if you don't walk the first 60 yards from one mailbox to the next mailbox that first morning. And so the writing taught me about incrementalism and it also caught me, taught me about what I call commitment to the commitment. So the 420 consecutive days has led to, to me to some habits of whether it's, you know, number of certain other things I do. Like for a year, I ate only fruit until noon because I wanted to do something for me. It, it balanced, it worked out okay from a blood sugar, et cetera. But I would, so I wouldn't recommend that to everybody without, you know, medical advice, et cetera. But for me, it helped digestively really give me a lot of energy in the morning that was not taken up from heavy breakfasts. I learned that from Jesse Itzler. I decided I was going to do 100,000 push-ups, and I wanted to do it within a certain period of time. So in, in 850 days, I completed that. So every day, I would not go to bed until I did that thing. Um, and I just completed um, um, uh, Andy Frisella's program called 75 Hard, which is kind of a mental and a fitness process that you do some five things for 75 consecutive days. So I'm really into right now the little things that we do, especially at the beginning of the year. And one of them can be start speaking affirmations into your life, speaking gratitude into your life and speaking the, the outcomes that you're looking for step by step. I love how you said commitment to the commitment. That is huge because so many people make commitments to themselves, especially at the beginning of the year, but then they go back on those or they renege. But I love how you, you made the commitment, but then you committed to that commitment. What, what drives you? What, what about people who they really want to make these commitments, but they don't have that drive to make that, uh -huh. those kind of changes? 
I get it. I get it. Hundred percent. This isn't a light switch, right? You don't just go, okay, now I'm a d- different person. What What drove me to that really was the divine gift of writing. Um, it was just okay. What's today? What's today? And and I also I also tried to focus on getting a little bit better each day. Now there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be you know, you take one step forward, you feel like you're taking three steps back. But if you keep stepping forward, um, I get that that's really difficult, especially I'm not even going to talk about the year we just came out of because that's that's important, but it's the launching pad, right? I mean, sometimes the best place to be to save yourself is in the deep end of a swimming pool at the bottom because that's where you can push off with the most force. So to me, it was just a little bit at a time. And I'll, I'll, I also love to talk about activation, not motivation. Motivation is like a shower. We all need it every day, right? Zig Ziglar said that. But activation means you're going to take what this is, this commitment to yourself, and you're going to do it. And you're going to do something that triggers the action every day. So what that might be is put the shoes at the end of the bed every morning for a week then the next week, or whatever the thing is you're gonna do. You wanna learn to play piano, you're gonna sit down for 10 minutes a day, every day, leave the book out, leave the lid up, whatever those things are. The other thing is put in your calendar 30 days from now, a reminder that you're still doing the things that you started on day one, and then go another 15 days out and put something encouraging. You got this, I'm glad to see you here today. How are we, something that, helps you because you can't do it on your own right it's so hard but anyway those are just some things that I would say yeah that's so good and so practical I love that so much now I know a lot of people have a word of the year do you do that do you have a word this year that you're kind of focusing on I do Um, and 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 so I will tell you this just totally transparently that one of the things I learned over the last you know 12 months 18 months maybe is that I have a tendency, and it might just be kind of my nature, and I'm going to flip this, to be a little bit conservative and reserved in taking a step out. Now, granted, you might say, baloney, Bruce, you know, you wrote a book, you did a TED Talk, everything's relative to where you are, right? And so I've, I've, I've landed on the fact that sometimes I come out of the box with a limiting belief before I come out with a belief of anything is possible. So my word for the year starting just January 1st is the word abundance and living in a a, a mindset of abundance that doesn't necessarily mean material. It doesn't mean uh, accumulation of things. It just means that the world is abundant. There are, there is not scarcity. And so if I commit to that and I start looking for creating abundance, helping others be abundant, in your faith, in your walk, in your relationships. The other things then will just sort of look at possibilities as opposed to hesitation, you know, trying to be wise with that. So, uh, you know, I wrote these words vertically, right? As you know, in in my book, Above the Chatter, Our Words Matter. And so I wrote abundance just vertically. And I'll take a second and I'll just read through what that meant to me and how I am doing my best to implement a mindset of abundance. So A in abundance is a life without limits. That's the A. I have to to say there are no limits to what I can achieve, to the changes I can make, to the improvements I can make, whether it's a challenge out of something or if it's a leap into something, a life without limits. B is built on faith and purpose. I know there's so much greater for me if I get out of my own way and let my God take me where he has intended for me to go in that purpose. So by faith and by purpose. So built on faith and purpose is B. Okay, the U in abundance is uplifting and uplifted. So I believe if I start with serving and working to uplift others, I will automatically be uplifted. And I don't do it for return. I do it to help uplift others. Because I know a lot of folks are struggling through what we just ended. We all have something that's different in a struggle. So if I'm looking to ways to uplift 
I know I'll be uplifted. So that's the U. N is no hesitation, full on go. That doesn't mean reckless, but that means, I mean, Mel Robbins talks about the five second rule, right? Five, four, three, two, one, decide, go. Um, if I'm in the right path, if I'm faithful in my, in my um, you know, walk with the Lord, if I believe I'm on the right path, I truly believe I need to hesitate less. I can move more quickly because I'm on that part. So N is no hesitation, full on go. D, sorry, I'm get, getting caught on this a little bit. But now we're down to the D in abundance. This D is, is so direct, good. D is directed by his gifts and calling. Man, I tell you, it took me a while. Like the beginning of last year, April, I was thinking, you know, God, I know you have it in your plan for me. I get it. I understand. Just give it to me because I'm ready to go. So I really had to learn some patience. And to actually let go, instead of saying, just give me the roadmap, I'll drive there. That was really the wrong way for me to think about it. I, almost, I had to get out of the driver's seat. So being directed by his gifts and calling is also, I believe, going to create my abundance. Okay, A, is aligned with a path of serving. If I start there, I kind of said that already up top, but if I start by, by finding ways to help others, um, that's, that is going to build abundance. Um, the N is navigating to more yeses. So look for reasons to say yes to opportunity, yes to things. I just jumped into Clubhouse a couple of days ago. I have no idea what I'm doing in there, but I got nominated and I said, yes, I'm in. Now it's, now it's the, uh, the, the challenge is how do I not spend all day in there finding these club rooms to go to, et cetera. But anyway, but, but saying yes more often and then figure out how later. Okay. So C is for abundance is capable and committed. I've got to believe that, and I do believe this, that we are all enough. We are born enough. We have every ingredient. We have every part. We have everything it takes, right, to be capable. And what we just need to be is committed to that. And then the E in abundance, which is the result, is endless blessings and bounty. So that's my word for the year is abundance. And um, yeah, so thank you for asking me to share that. Yeah, that's so good. I love that so, so much. And I think that's going to help so many people just to realize like your intentionality, like a lot of people have a word of the year and then that's it. That's just like something they want to post on social media, but you've actually, you know, you've taken the time. Okay. What does this mean to me and how can I implement yeah, yeah, yeah. it? Because I think that's yep. a lot of people's hang up. You know, they, they have good intentions. They want to make the commitment. They have their word. They want to be consistent, but it really takes that being intentional and taking the steps. So I appreciate you sharing that. That's awesome. So, so here's a challenge, right? Let's say you've got your word for the year or, or, or some of your audience does. And that's awesome. I love the fact that you, you focused on it because why? It's a word that means something to you. It's either something that jumped out of the page. It might be something that a basketball teacher mentioned to you when you were 12 years old, or it could be the choir directors, you know, when you're working on this performance and they gave you some bit of encouragement, whatever the word is and wherever it came from, here's my challenge, write it vertically, just like I did. And now write a word or a phrase with each letter in that word and watch that word come to life for you. I do it in my workshops, which I actually called word shops. I do it when I can. I do it in my keynote talks when we have enough time to just challenge folks to go after their word. And then do it with your family. Do it with some coworkers where you're coming up for a word that might be a theme or a mission, you know, a theme for your family for the year or a theme for your corporation or a theme for your business. So write it vertically and then use the letters to activate that word. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, what would you say to someone who is watching this and they are just struggling they have just had just maybe a rough go at it and they hear what we're saying and they're like, yes, I want, I see all of your energy, your joy. I want that, but I just don't know how to get over the hump or I get, get past the wall that I, that I feel like I'm facing. Yeah. And, and believe me, I don't underestimate that. Okay. I mean, to me, quite honestly, um, you know, I deal with that every day. I still am writing because I need it more than I need to post it. I mean, this is something that really, you know, what's, okay, what's the word today? What's the word today? So um, I, would, I would say acknowledge, this is a couple of things. Um, and I can't take these as ownership, but there's some things that I put into my life that really helped me during those kinds of times. 
So we're going through some challenges. We're going through tough times. We're just stuck, right? We're, we can't get away from this or around this. I would say, try this, write a letter to yourself and acknowledge all that stuff. I've wanted to lose 30 pounds for five years and I've never been able to do it. I've wanted to start my own company and I've tried a couple of times and they've failed. Write it down, write it as a letter to yourself and own every one of those things. There's no one to, it's not a blame game, uh, but, but write it as if that is what had, has been. I am, I was unable to do this. I was unable to do that. I'm stuck here. The injury, my health, whatever those things are, write them down and own them because they are who you have been, right? They are reality. You can't just put them in a box and throw them away. Step into them and own them. So for me, it was, man, I, my, you know, there were, there were 500 people let go the same day I was at a company of 20,000 people. What that meant was at one point in time, there were 1,500 people's names on a grease board somewhere and mine did not get erased, right? Oh, we'll keep him, we'll keep her, we'll keep them. We'll keep... Mine stayed on the board. So I was like, what, what is it about me? I mean, all of that. I, I, so I write it down as a letter to yourself. Read it out loud, then shred it. Tear it up, like rip it apart. I wouldn't say light it on fire because it's dangerous, whatever, but, but, but destroy it because that's who you were potentially, right? That's who your perception was. And now start on a blank sheet of paper and start with the sentences that say, I am, or I will become, or I am becoming. And you start a whole fresh garden. You basically turned over the garden. So, you know, again, it's an exercise and you got to do it alone. You've got to do it and commit some time because it isn't easy. And another thing that we wrote a couple of years ago, one of my phrases for a couple of years ago was do hard things. And if we do hard things, hard things become easier to do. So I guess that's what I would say as maybe an activational step is write, some, write, a, write a letter to yourself and go ahead and own that stuff. Then move it aside not who you are, maybe it's who you thought you were. Yeah, that is so good. Thank you for all of that. I love the idea of tearing it or shredding it. It's just so symbolic. Like I'm, I'm no longer identifying with what I feel like has been holding me back. So I think that can be a hang up too. Like the thing that's keeping people stuck, they identify with that, that becomes their identity. And so it's hard to let go of your identity but when you just decide, you know what, no longer ripping it up, that's not me. I think that is a huge, great first step for someone on a journey. Oh, man, Bruce, you are amazing. I'm so thankful that God crossed our paths. Any final words of encouragement for us today? And then also, please tell us about your book. I'll make sure to have the links to everything on the show notes, your TED talk, where can people connect with you? Yeah. Because I know they, they are loving you right now because I love you. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, first of all, thank you so much. And just understand that, that we're all the same. We're all, we're all unique, but we all go through, you know, the doubt, the questioning, the wanting to become more and, and all of that. And so, you know, so I, I would say, I would say, I think probably just, just get started and then refuse to quit. So I, I wish I had this written down. Let me see if I can find it real quick because I was on it was a Bible study yesterday that I was on and uh, this, I cannot take this as my own. I'm gonna butcher it, but I was asking someone about their powerful word and their phrase. Has anybody said anything to them that they recall? It's always too early to quit. It's always too early to quit. So that's, that's something that I'm, I'm just thinking about, okay, man, I'm tired. I'm, and there's some, you know, David Goggins talks about in his book, we don't quit when we're tired, we quit when we're done, but it's never, it's always too early to quit would be sort of a phrase to hang on to. And how to reach me? Well, thank you for asking. The, the website for my book is the name of the book and it's above the chatter, our words matter. There's a couple of things you do. If you can go there to get the book, you can also get it on Amazon, but if you get it there, I will personally sign, I personally sign every copy. So if you want to get some for a gift, you, you know, you say, hey, Bruce, I want to buy three books. I will ask you in a, in a message back to whom are we signing this? And it comes as a gift from you. So that, that's one thing. And the other is every time a book is purchased from my website or if I'm booked to speak, um, I donate a book. 
So if a case of books are bought, I find a place to donate a case of books in hospitals, homeless shelters. There's an organization in Atlanta that is amazingly involved in passionate about trafficking and exploited women called Wellspring Living. Uh, I speak there, I donate books there. Um, so that's, that's one way on the, on the social. Um, Instagram is above the chatter Bruce Pulver. Facebook is above the chatter Bruce Pulver. And I post words every day there and I you know, love the engagement. Um, yeah, and reach out to me uh, on any of those venues. If any, you know anyone that's you know, looking for a workshop or, or any way that I can continue to serve uh, and, and organization they being part of. Awesome. Thank you, Bruce, so much. It has been so fun talking to you. And thank you for the value that you have brought to us today. Um, this is just, has been an incredible interview. And I just pray complete blessings over you and your business and your ministry and your family. And I'm looking forward just to the connection that God made today. Thank you, April. The pleasure is mine. It's been an honor to be with you. That was such a great interview. Thank you, Bruce, for giving us all that wisdom. Man, guys, I hope you were encouraged today. I know you were encouraged today. Please share this out on your socials and tag me at April Nicole Sip. Also remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you want to continue this conversation, I hope that you want to do that. Head over to the Live Lovely Community Facebook group. We are a group of women and we're building authentic friendships centered around God's word, and we want to invite you to join us. I'll see you next time. Until then, go live, love, and lead well. Have a great day.